Hello everyone, I have some breaking news to share with you. Now, like me, many of you have been waiting on this and it finally happened. Yesterday, November the 8th, 2023, a federal court issued a nationwide injunction against ATF regarding their final rule on stabilizing sprays. That's right, a nationwide injunction. About time, right? This ruling came out of the United States District Court for the Northern District of Texas in the case of Brito versus ATF. In this case, the plaintiffs are three veteran Marines who were affected by ATF's final rule on stabilizing brace that made just about any kind of pistol with an attached stabilizing brace, a short barrel rifle, which we all know SBRs have to be re regulated under the National Firearms Act, the NFA. In the lawsuit, the plaintiffs allege ATF's rule violates the Second Amendment, the separation of powers and non-delegation principles. The rule conflicts with the NFA's definition of a rifle. The rule is arbitrary and capricious under the Administrative Procedure Act, APA, and finally that the rule is void for vagueness. As part of their lawsuit, the Marines sought a preliminary injunction to prevent ATF from enforcing their final rule regarding stabilizing brace while the case was being litigated. Now, if you've been following the Firearm Firm channel and watching any of our latest video, you should be an expert on the standard needed for the court to grant a preliminary injunction at this point. We've talked about it over and over. However, if you are joining us for the very first time today, let me quickly catch up to speed. In order for a court to grant a preliminary injunction, the party seeking it must show four things. The first is there is a substantial likelihood of success on the merits. Number two, there's a substantial threat of irreparable harm if the injunction is not issued. Number three, the threat and injury outweighs any harm that will result in granting the injunction. And finally, number four, that granting the injunction is in the public interest. Now that we're all on the same page, let's go over the order uh, issued by the judge to understand exactly how he came to the great decision he ultimately came to in granting what everyone is deeming to be a nationwide injunction. The first factor the court had to consider was pretty easy because the court relied on the precedent set from the United States Court of Appeals for the Fifth Circuit in the Mock v. Garland case, which involved a challenge to the final rule uh, based on a APA violation. In the Mock v. Garland case, the Fifth Circuit held that the rule was not a logical outgrowth of the proposed rule, that the monumental error was prejudicial, and that it must be set aside as unlawful. Now, I'm not going to get into the entire Mock v. Garland case, but for any of you that are not familiar with the ruling, you can click on the link above and watch our video discussing it. In using the precedent set out in the Mock case, this court wrote, Given the Fifth Circuit's holding, this court recognizes the rule was not a logical outgrowth of the proposed rule, and therefore it must be set aside as unlawful. The court in its order went on to discuss that since it is finding that the rule violates the APA, there's no reason to even get into the constitutional issue of whether or not the rule violated the Second Amendment, which of course is what I wish they would have done. Now, moving on to the second requirement needed to grant a preliminary injunction, the court found that the plaintiffs would suffer irreparable harm if an injunction was not granted based on the compliance cost the plaintiffs would have incur in complying with the final rule. As to the final two factors, the court found that there is generally no public interest in the perpetuation of an unlawful agency action. Now, although the court did grant the injunction in favor of the plaintiffs, the judge wrote that the court is not insensitive to ATF's concern over gun industry gamesmanship and attempts to circumvent NFA's restrictions on SBRs. However, the government may not simply posit uh, that the regulation promotes an important interest to justify its regulation. The court went on to write that the court is certainly sympathetic to ATF's concern over public safety in the wake of tragic mass shootings. The rule embodies salutary policy goals meant to protect vulnerable people in society, but public safety concerns must be addressed in ways that are lawful. This rule is not. For the foregoing reasons, the court grants the motion and stays the rule in its entirety. There you go, ladies and gentlemen, an injunction that is not limited to members of certain organizations or customers of specific re retailers. The wording of this order seems to imply it is for everyone. Now, we all know that the government is not going to just throw in the towel and accept this uh, ruling. I expect an appeal will be coming, but keep in mind that the appeal will be heard by the same court of appeals that handed down the Mock v. Garland decision, so the government has to know the odds are not in their favor. Listen. I know you're going to have questions, so be sure to leave them down in the comments section. Or, as always, you can email your questions directly to us at questions at thefirearmfirm.com. 
Be sure to share your excitement about this uh, court ruling by hitting that like button. And if you found this video to be informative, be sure to hit the subscribe icon located down the bottom right hand corner of this video to subscribe to the Firearm Firm channel. Until next time, stay armed and educated.